Uh, so my name is Richard Dunn and I'm head teacher of Ashley Primary School in Walton-on-Thames, just south of London. So today I'm going to be talking about what are nature's principles of harmony um, because we've used those principles of harmony as guiding principles for all our learning in school and I've started to share them both in this country and around the world and a lot of people think they have a great value in providing a context for the learning that we do. I think it's about how we teach our young people. So it's about the, uh, the framework for the learning, it's about the context for the learning, it's about the culture for the learning. So um, if I give you an example, in nature diversity, biodiversity is a strength, it's a good thing. So in our schools we need to be celebrating diversity. So diversity is about finding individual talents, skills, abilities, passions, uh, and then giving them an opportunity to develop them and share them. I think most education doesn't do that. Uh, so how do you, within a framework of learning, how do you provide opportunities for children to become experts in areas of their learning that they, they're really interested in? So I've noticed here that you've given lots of time for lunch times and break times and uh, uh, I think that's a good thing because often it's during those conversation times that people really get to, to learn things together. Um, I mean there have been some fascinating keynote speakers today uh, giving some really insightful commentary on leadership um, but I think it's the combination of that and, and the other aspects of just interaction, dialogue which is uh, key to, to the success of such a conference. But I, I certainly from my experience, um, if it's too much in a lecture theatre or in a room listening to one person, uh, there is a value in that from time to time, but if it's too much like that, um, it can get a bit dry. So it's good to have that interaction time and that downtime. I mean, in my school I would say there are leaders all over the school and that runs right through from the head teacher to the deputy to the teachers to the children and in my school we have a strong emphasis on leadership for our children. Um, so leadership is about an ability to uh, take on board um, an idea, an initiative, a project, uh, to run with it, to make it successful, um, whereas a head teacher is, is spe a specific role, whereas I don't think leadership is. I think leadership permeates through everything. So I think there's a lot around that. Um, where do we see the leadership roles and for me as a head teacher, it's about encouraging those leadership roles right through the school. Um, I mean, I'm happy to have ultimate accountability for what happens in school, but I want people to be leaders of their particular area. I mean, in today's world, an Ofsted outstanding grade, my school's been outstanding for, for many years, and it is a, it is a factor in, in the success of the school because people want to come there. Um, but I think leadership uh, is about uh, something much different from that. I would say it's actually about seeing where there's a problem or an issue or a need uh, or something could be better and then changing it. I think for, I mean I've been a head teacher for a long time so I think for me today it just reinforces what I know which is that uh, <clears throat> we need as leaders, head teachers, <laughs> leaders as head teachers, to have a real vision of what we want to do and where we want to go and to have the courage to do that. Uh, I sometimes feel that there's a lot of fear in education around Ofsted and inspections and data and you know we're always going to have testing but it does feel like it's quite heavy and then people get worried that they can't do things. 